What's happening, guys? My name is Chris. And I am Amelia Earhart. We. <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of That Tattoo Show. We interviewed Gaston from FKINs. I enjoyed it. What did you think? I thought it was good. It was a good chat, yeah. wasn't it? Shame they're not going to get to see most of it. Yeah, so <laughs> we tried our best. Unfortunately, we had to use. Uh, some kind of app called Microsoft Zoom. That's when we should have known it was going to go tits up the moment we heard the word Microsoft. So we had to use that to do the recording. And one thing I didn't realise with Zoom is it tends to kind of switch the, the, the camera between people. And when, say, for example, Gaston is talking or when I'm talking, the camera's on like Paul kind of going... <laughs> Just so staring into space. <laughs> And this is why it took me an absolute age to edit this together. I tried my best. I really hope you enjoy watching it. To be fair to you, mate, given... I mean, I've seen the footage before you edited it. You've, it's actually miraculous what you've, what you've done, to be honest with you, because the footage wasn't... Uh, it, it wasn't good. Chris has had to edit around a lot of stuff. And talking of that, the interview will cut off suddenly at the end. Unfortunately, the bit where Gaston says Tara uh, to us and the usual show outro is lost forever in the interwebs somewhere. And yeah. We, we, can't, we can't find it. Enjoy the interview for now. We'll be back at the end. Gaston, thank you very much for coming on the show, mate. What we like to do first, because believe it or not, there are some people that may not know who you are, although if you don't, then where the fuck have you been? Can we do a little quick fire round? <laughs> who are you? Where are you based? What do you do? And how long have you been in the industry? Go. Uh, <laughs> well, my name is Gaston. <laughs> my name is Gaston Siciliano. I... I'm a tattoo artist and a tattoo machine builder, engineer, slash a little bit of everything. So uh, I've been in the tattoo industry since I was pretty much 15 years old. And uh, that's how I you know, got started building tattoo machines. I built my very, very first uh, tattoo machine with my own hand. So I was born in Argentina and back then, you know, tattoo was completely illegal. Uh, I didn't know anyone that tattooed. Uh, there were no tattoo shops around that time so i decided to just you know th take things uh my, into my, my own hands and i remember actually watching a video when i was 15 years old about prison tattoos and that's how everything started yeah i was watching it with my dad and i'm like hmm so you can actually poke your own skin with a needle and <laughs> ink and you can actually get a tattoo that's interesting so um yeah my dad actually at that time um he uh he was into german shepherd so he was vaccinating the dogs i knew that i had needles he was also an architect, so I knew I had Indian ink that he, you know, he was using <laughs> for drafting plans and stuff. And I'm like, I think I have all the tools, you know. And I gave myself, you know, my very first tattoo. So that's the intro. What was the other question? How long have you been in the industry? Since I was 15, so I'm 45. Do the math. Uh, what is it? 30 years. 30 years. There you go. Hey, with tattooists, I can count. <laughs> You know, I don't consider that time being in the industry. I think I can say they're, you know, 30 years into the exploration of tattooing and, and machine making. To be honest with you, I took this professionally back in 2000 and 2001, maybe. Um, mm. I was tattooing, you know, since, since I was 15 years old, you know, I, I was tattooing people and uh, I just didn't consider those tattoo <laughs> professional by any means, right? And it was, uh, it was kind of like to me, um, you know, a learning experience, a very long learning experience, both tattooing and machine building, because everything, sorry for the noise, but there's a little bit of construction going on here. For those of you that, that are wondering, Gaston has actually been good enough to do this interview with us in the middle of building the studio that he's actually sitting in. We really do appreciate you taking the time out. We know he took the time out of the day. This is actually the first live that I do. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Let me know how it sounds. <laughs> Drop a comment down below. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I was telling you, you know, I never consider the first time, you know, that first one, 15 to 20 something like the first 15 years were kind of like try and error, you know, 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, I moved to the United States when I was uh, 21. 
So, uh, what else? 15, 21, six years. And when I came here, pretty much, you know, I have to survive. So, tattooing was always there as something that I knew, you know, how to do, but I just couldn't get a, a job as a tattoo artist. Um, you know, I didn't have a portfolio or anything. So, I started just tattooing friends and stuff like that, like everyone else, you know. Unfortunately, I started mm. tattooing at my house. A lot of people, uh, there's a lot of big artists that started that way, though, isn't it? I started tattooing how I thought it was right. And even at that time, you know, we're talking about 1997. Yes, there were a lot of tattoo shops here down in Miami Beach, but no one would take a guy that could barely speak English and a guy that was 21 years old, you know. So I kept my journey, you know, on my own, you know, just tattooing friends and stuff like that. And uh, I took the, I took the machine building really, really seriously. So I'm like, okay, um, there's a place called Home Depot. They sell all the tools. I mean, that's easy. You know, I can just walk into this place and get everything I need. I can get saws, I can welders. And that's basically what I did, guys. So um, yeah. I started twinkering with, uh, actually, I have a machine that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. One of my first, uh, commercial line of handmade machines so i went to home depot and, and bought you know cold roll steel stock um a drill i bought a bench i bought a hot saw a welder a grinder and i'm like let's start making tattoo machines and that's what i did you know at that time i was working at the studio by then and um you know i was building a machine for my colleagues you know my the, the fellow tattoo artists that were sharing the shop with me and then, you know, they started liking what I was producing. And, you know, that motivated me to continue to make even more machines. Now, back in the days in Argentina, I made tattoo machines that were sub prison rig type of uh, gear. <laughs> but that, you know, I didn't have Home Depot. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I had like a rinky dinky hardware store by my house. That was it. So when I came here and I saw so much um, availability of everything in the United States, I'm like, you know, I got this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got this, you know, and yeah, I, I started building tattoo machines. Now, my background when I came here uh, to the United States was flipping hamburgers, parking cars, cleaning toilets. Um, I even worked at a Speedo store selling like bathing suits and stuff. Yeah, man, it took me a while. It took me a while, but back in 2007 is when I decided to take it really seriously. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to invest a little bit of cash and I'm gonna buy a couple of tools and, you know, like I guess a couple of tools, a hot saw, a welder, a uh, hammer, a bench, and I built this machine that I have in front of me right now. And I call this machine the Wasp, and I sold like about 10 of them. And as a matter of fact, this machine, I got it from someone in the UK. I saw this machine on eBay, and I'm like, I recognize that machine. So I contacted the guy, I'm like, listen, you know, I wanna buy that machine back. Cause before, you know, I was building tattoo machines and at that time, you know, social media didn't exist. So, you know, I was lurking message boards. Nick Baxter had one, uh, Brandon Bond from All or Nothing had one. So I was just joining them, you know, and, and getting to know the industry, getting to know the artists and, and, you know, showcasing my designs. And, you know, it didn't take long for people to wonder what this machine can do. So I started selling a couple of them. So I opened a PayPal account and, you know, a machine like this would take me easily by hand with a hot sign, a welder, maybe two days, three days yes, sometimes. Yes. And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. I would spend three days. And by the time I went to tap this, the um, the bay, the tap will actually break and that's it. I would have to start all over again. Oh, no. Multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> multiple times. Multiple times. So that's how I get started. Do you find much time to tattoo these days? Do you still do it much or is it like only now and then? At least I tattoo once a month or so, you know. Not like I used to before. Um, sometimes I tattoo a little bit more than other times. Uh, for example, when we were working on uh, this new guy right here, the, the Spectra Flux, I mean, I tattoo heavily to really fine tune the machine. Um, but I enjoy tattooing right now. You know, for me, it's, it's a whole event. You know, it's kind of like a wedding. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I get to tattoo today, you know and uh, I spent my time designing the piece, whereas before, um, you know, I, at one point I owned three tattoo shops, you know. I started with a little shop and then, you know, I needed to bring more artists and ended up with three shops and I was tattooing at the three shops, you know, I was rotating the, the days of the, the week at the different shops and at the same time in between, uh, in between appointments and weekends building tattoo machines. So I've done the marathon <laughs> like for many years mm. as well. And now to me, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's so much fun for me to, to get a tattoo. But again, you know, I also enjoy the other side, which is yeah. the building tattoo machines. And at one point, 
you know, I decided to focus and be good at one thing that being mediocre at several things. Um, yeah, that yeah. was kind of my my approach. You know, I, you know, it was a hard decision because uh, from tattooing, sometimes 10 hours a day to kind of like tattooing whenever you can. It's, you know, it was hard, but, uh, you know, I got used to it and I get to do whenever I want right now. And, um, you know, my my life doesn't depend on that. So because of that, it became a little bit more fun. But uh, now my life depends because of this. I was looking on your website today and I noticed that you are a co-sponsor of the Hope Versus Cancer Foundation, which looks like an amazing charity to me. I, I just thought I'd ask you, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, when it comes to charities, you know, we always participated on a lot of things throughout the history of FK Irons. And one of my good friends, actually, he was a customer first, came to my shop uh, back in, I don't know, like 10, 12 years ago when I own my shops on the beach. And uh, he came to the shop and he wanted to get a tattoo. I did a tattoo, we became friends and we always kept in touch. And uh, he happened to then later on found a job at the airport, at, um, at the airport bar. And every time I would travel to a convention, I would stop by his bar, right? And yeah. we got to see each other almost every two weeks or every month. And he was telling me that he wanted to start this concept of uh, you know, helping kids with cancer through tattooing. So I'm like, explain to me a little bit more because that sounds interesting. He's like, well, I have this idea uh, of um, reaching out to artists to design flash work that then we can turn into FDA approved um, transferable tattoos, you know, fake tattoos and go to the hospitals and, you know, uh, motivate kids and, you know, just give them tattoos for free, you know, temporary tattoos for free, you know, lift out their spirits and, uh, and, you know, that's basically what I want to do. You know, I would love to also uh, make these tattoos into T-shirts and donate 100 percent of the proceeds to uh, uh, cancer research and this and that. And I'm like, you know what, man, whenever you're ready to uh, get this going. One second, because he's lifting the port lift. He told me, uh, so I tell him whenever you're ready with this mission, you know, whenever you have something solid, let me know. I'll like to be part of it. You know, I can help you get the exposure in the tattoo industry. You know, I want to be a spokesperson for the charity yeah. as well. So, yeah, that's basically it. We met a year later again. It's like, man, I, I think I have something to present to you. And I was blown away. He opened Tyler. He opened a book and there he had all the uh, tattoos. He reached out himself to tattoo artists. There were a lot of t-shirts made. Uh, they were actually, he was actually going himself to hospitals and doing it on his own. And I'm like, man, let's take this to the next level. So we started brainstorming a lot of ideas. And one of the things that we did is that every time we had a convention, we would set up a little cardboard tattoo shop uh, right next to our booth. So it was like be someone donating their time, putting free tattoos to kids that came by and then people awesome. donating money as a tip. And we would donate, you know, all that money to, to charity. So the mission actually became pretty, uh, pretty amazing. We got a lot of, um, um, you know, a lot of good feedback from everyone, you know, to the point that the Miami Heat, the basketball team is one of our partners right now. Uh, and, awesome. Yeah, and we got interest from everyone. It got to a point that everyone wanted to take part of it. And then, you know, we uh, uh, associate ourselves with a lot of uh, uh, influencer tattoo artists like Tattoo Baby. We would go and, you know, places and she would actually draw a lot of people. And we, you know, we tattoo players. We tattoo Dwayne Way. We tattoo... Uh, tattoo a lot of the heat players actually then mm. they would actually play with tattoos on their faces um and, and <laughs> people would, would, yeah people would wonder what he got a new tattoo now it's a fake tattoo so that would create a lot of a lot of uh, free press for hope versus cancer so um right now at one point i was the co-founder uh with tyler of hope versus cancer uh and once i helped him out once i helped out the foundation to actually uh, run on its own and we got some um, some uh, pretty solid structure of people, you know, to, to really run things like, like a, you know, like a real foundation. I step back and keep, uh, you know, keep assisting them uh, from the background because, um, uh, you know, that's what I like to do, help out people. So uh, yeah. I'm still there, you know, we're still brainstorming on new things, you know, that we could do. And it's 100% of all the proceeds free, you know, they go towards the, uh, the charity and we've done a lot of raffles we've done a lot of uh, giveaways you know we, we've done events and stuff like that that we invest our own money 
uh, just to help those kids. I myself gone to to the hospital, and you can check some videos on on the Instagram. Uh, put tattoos myself. Pretty tough, man. Pretty tough. And anyone that wants to get involved, simply go to hopeversuscancer.org or reach us out on on Instagram at hopeversuscancer yeah, yeah. and yeah, send us you know a message. Well, I looked at that today actually. So while we're doing this, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the link that we talk that Gaston is talking about yeah. below on the screen right now. I actually check that if you go to like the artist tab there's actually templates and you can you can supply your artwork right it, it teaches you how to do it and it's you know how to send it in so if you want to get involved and you want to send some artwork then just the link will be along the bottom of the screen and we'll you know just send some artwork man to help the kids out you know makes them feel better since i've been doing my my youtube channel i've been learning about photography to try and give people tips um and then I come across that you are a really, really good photographer. And I don't know if like a lot of people know about your other Instagram, which we will link. Um, but how do you get into photography? Since I was a kid, um, I always liked to play with my dad's uh, camera, uh, mm. you know, from back, back from the old film, t uh, film days. And I always, you know, found it like pretty interesting being able to, you know, capture a moment of life and freeze it and, you know, come back a couple of years and go back to history I think you know I always was fascinated by by that aspect of photography you know you capture something and that's it you know you can go back and you can live that moment so um, I always liked it I never thought that I was gonna take it this serious but um, I think tattooing had a lot to do as well because uh, to be honest with you, I sucked at taking pictures, <laughs> you know, of my tattoo. Yeah, we've had this. Oh, I know all about that, man. I know. I still do, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then with uh, with smartphones, you know, trying to get pictures, you know, with good lighting. And I'm like, man, I found myself that, to be honest with you, I don't even have a portfolio right now. I mean, you have to Google my work to find it because, you know, I would find things that customer actually posts on my tattoo. I never, I never care about taking pictures of tattoos because mm -hmm. I never felt that I was, you know, uh, good enough at taking pictures with digital phones but mm -hmm. then I'm like you know what man it can be you know I own three shops I need to have a big you know I need to I need to show my work so I start exploring uh, photography um, lighting and stuff like that and I'm like man I'm liking this thing then um, with FK irons you know I had to take picture of my tattoo machines and I want to make him to look as realistic as possible you know obviously so people can appreciate all the work that went through those through those machines and because of that, because of taking pictures of, of tattoo machines, um, you know, I started sharpen, sharpening my skills, you know, uh, learning about cameras, uh, cameras, learning about lighting. And then, like always, I get bored really quick, man. And this is the reason why we have a lot of pro uh, products and, and, and projects, because I get, I get bored really quick, you know. And then I'm like, man, you know, I want to take uh, more pictures of people. I just want to do something else with all, all this gear mm. that I have. So I started taking pictures of friends. I started taking pictures of more of my wife. And and then, you know, people, again, people were saying, hey, man, you should post your picture. Those are really good. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, yeah. So I started, like, uh, taking more pictures and creating my Instagram account because before they were scattered everywhere. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, that really drove me to push, push, push more and more in photography. Um, you know, I would actually, every time that I would take a trip, you know, I would bring my cameras and, and you know, get in touch with people on social media. I, you know, you want to shoot with me and stuff like that. That's pretty much. Didn't you shoot with somebody? Did, sorry to interrupt you. Didn't you shoot with somebody in London when you came over for the convention? I'm sure you did. I actually shot three models when I was in yeah. London. Yeah, I shot three models, and then you know, then I started getting calls from people who actually wanted to hire me to do photo shoots and and oh, catalogs good. and stuff like that. So yeah, then all of a sudden, like I'm like, fuck, man, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> You know, and and then I built like this is my photography studio. Um, you know, we have a cyclorama here. Um, you know, we do a lot of the uh, editing here of the picture. We do like just you know have an editor as well that helps me with the video stuff. I do all the behind yeah. the scenes of my photo shoot. I like to teach people about photography. I like to train people about the camera itself. Um, this is the table where I do all my videos. I mean, one of the places where I do all my videos. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then I, I'm like, you know, I really like this, you know? Yeah, what cameras do you use? I mean, I shoot mostly with Canon and, and Sony. I build my lens collection based on those two brands. You, you might put the phone down on us at this point because uh, <laughs> me and Chris have been talking about your latest machine. 
which is, I believe, the one that's on the table in front of you, which He's is the, the wireless ready. pen. I have a couple of, a little bit of a timeline here, and this is what I want to prepare for you guys. And um, yeah, we can talk about the weight of the different machines. So, like I mentioned before, this one was one of the uh, first uh, commercial handmade models that I did, the Wasp. Uh, yep, that machine yep. was made in 2006. Then this one was the lightest tattoo machine, one of the first production models of tattoo machine is called Galaxy. This machine weighs about 4.5 ounces or something like that. That's pretty cool. And it was one of the first camera, uh, cameras. It was one of the first <laughs> tattoo machines with a one and a half coil. As you can see, it's pretty well balanced, pretty light. And uh, this was basically, I think, the machine that, uh, you know, took me or took FKR and as a company, uh, as a known uh, manufacturer for tattoo equipment, yeah. because we saw a lot of these machines. And in this machine, there are a lot of new things that when this machine actually launched, um, machines didn't have. Uh, one was like the super lightweight of the machine, the other way, uh, the design of the inlay uh, yoke, um, another yeah. thing, also another yoke right here made out of steel for the clip cord. And yeah, yeah there were some, some, some stuff there. This, cool. this one is kind of like the timeline when we started to make a lot of uh, rotary machines. And the first machine that I built was called the Spectra Halo. This one is the Spectra Direct, yeah. which is a direct drive machine and has the motor that actually disengage and re-engages with the stroke. So the stroke. Yeah. I so I had the um, I had the first one of those. I had the the first model of the Direct you made. Awesome yeah, man. Machine. Yeah. So so you know we 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 did a lot of uh, a lot of rotary machines. You know after the Halo we did the Halo Two. We did the Direct One, Direct Two. This is the Direct Two. We did the Edge. X, then we did the edge, which didn't have give adjustment. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, and you know, we kept on producing also coin machines. I think the last coin machine that we made was called the, uh, on, what, what, well, not, not the Exactor, the um, Roswell. That was the last coin mm -hmm. machine that we did. And we still have a lot of them in stock and we're still sell it, selling them until these days. A lot of people actually from the UK um, seem to love this machine. And yeah, um, at the time that I came up with this line machines you know i got a little bit of love but also i got a little bit of hate because until that time a lot of people were still using heavy machines and you know i didn't have a name in the industry for being a tattoo artist nor being a knowledgeable or reputable machine builder you know i just believe that this was better than what it was out there you know because yeah. of x reasons and you know i built this machine because of my own needs of needing something lighter because i was getting hammer in my you know, in my wrist tattooing for so many hours mm. with heavy machines. So I built this one out, out of, out of uh, necessity, but at the same time, there were a lot of people that were also on their way out because of the weight of the machine. So this one saves a lot of, saved a lot of people's career. I, I've heard that a lot from a lot of artists, you know. The, the first aluminum machine saved my career. And I think that one of the reasons why rotaries became so popular is because a lot of artists also were having a lot of problems with the weight of the machine. And rotaries yeah, was yeah. an immediate way to not only minimize the weight of the machine, but also minimize the setup, make it much more streamlined, you know. Um, like for example, this machine, you don't even need a grommet or a rubber band. It has like an adjustable tensioner and it has uh, this clip that acts as a uh, kind of like a grommet armature attachment. And last but not least, this is the latest one uh, machine. You guys probably have seen it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first, I mean, at the time that we launched, it was the first wireless pen and everything is in the machine. You know, I always had a dream from the beginning that I would make a machine that was autonomous. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it took me 13 years to make it happen. <laughs> but, but here it is, you know? And so I wanna, I wanna ask you a question about this because I can hate pen-shaped machines. Right, I want a I tattoo like machine. Why didn't Why didn't you make it like a ninety degree one, like a proper tattoo machine, so that it can sit on my hands? Because I don't want a great big pen like that. Is it a, a design thing that, you, that it has to work that way for the battery, or do you just do you just see the industry going more towards a pen shaped machine? To be honest with you, um, it all depends, you know, what you're into. Because I think that having a machine with a weight concentric towards your wrist, well, definitely you don't have any of that back pull, which is actually what causes Carpetano, you know, like okay. fighting fighting that way. But uh, the reason why it didn't do it like that, and it could have been the easiest way, because basically it would have been just to... Yeah, see, that's the one I would want. And, and yeah. attach. Yeah. It is easy to bag. I mean, you just drop this in your clip or sleeve and you're done. 
yeah, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So it was more of a conveniency and balance of the machine. You know, if you grab uh, a marker and grab this machine, it's kind of like the same range of yeah, motion yeah. that you have. And especially now, because you don't have a cable, you could really treat this as you know as a marker. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's pretty much you know you can translate everything that you use for your fine art into tattooing because of the range of motion that a machine like this allows you to do. I mean, obviously you can do the same, but still you have something dangling around yeah, yeah. from this. It's like trying to draw with pencil and put a piece of weight on the back of your pencil. I mean, you know, some people may like it, some people may not. I just decided to go with this because first of all, I liked it. And and uh, like I said, I don't design machines uh, just to have machines out there. I mean, to me, they have to, uh, they have to fix a problem. Yeah, yeah. So that the back way is a problem for some people. I agree with you there. So let me on. interrupt you for a change, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell you, we, we were talking about this earlier, right? Because Chris has got a pen machine by another manufacturer, right? So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy one of these machines, right, so that we can do a fair review. I don't, you know, I might get you to try and hook me up with a little discount, but I'm going to go and buy one so we can do a fair review. Given that I've already said I don't expect to enjoy using it, and we're going to A, B them against each other and, like, see what our experiences of the machines are. And these are going to be machines that we've, that we've genuinely bought, you know, we're not getting them for free from anybody. We're going to go out and put our own money down and go, I'll, I'll, we'll give it a go. Before you go, like, one, so one thing I actually, I've really wanted to know about this machine because like obviously a lot of the uh, a lot of other manufacturers out there are going for like you know that all rounder vibe 3.5 mil another brand is going for a standard 3.25 mil cam that that comes with the machine this one's your one is a four mil stroke length isn't it so what made proper you tattoo for, machine so yeah what made you go for a four millimeter stroke as opposed to like a 3.5 you know, we listen to, to our customers a lot. I mean, everything that we design not only solves a problem, but also is an answer from what customers want. And we've heard it like so many times, we want four millimeters. So we didn't have, I mean, we have four millimeters in this rotary machines. What happened is that the, the, every time you translate, every time your stroke is longer, you introduce different problems to the machine. So mm -hmm. you really have to uh, balance the cam differently so that four millimeter doesn't translate into a lot of vibration. And because of the size of this machine, this machine is a little bit bigger than the other machine, the other pen style machines that we make, it allows us to really properly balance the cam at four millimeter to reduce uh, the vibration of the machine. And to be honest with you, this is the vibration with the, um, the vibration. This is the machine with the least vibration out of all the machines that we make. Um, you know, once you put the cartridge, the vibration is almost non-existent in this machine. Like, I mean, I put it here on the table. Usually when a machine vibrates, it would actually start moving around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, dude, dude, dude all of my machines would have, would have, would have left, left the table yeah, the yeah, moment yeah, you yeah, let go yeah. of them. They should have leaving. Yeah, man, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what happened with like a coin machine, you know, big straw, you know, the hammer. Yeah, yeah. So, Vibration also is a problem, especially when you're trying to pull like clean, crispy line with a one liner, you know, like a 0.25 millimeter mm. liner, for example, you know, um, but... Um, so will that push like an 18 round shader, something like that, you know? You can carve stone with this machine. Yeah. It has yeah. a nine watt, yeah, it has a nine watt uh, motor, a brushless motor, has a lot of power. Do you make the motors or do you buy them in? Do you make the motors yourself? The motors are from Germany. They're uh, from a Bell company wire. called... Fa Fallhaber, yeah. So we have all the controllers right here in the machine, but also we have a dynamic uh, system that actually allows the machine to output the same torque without bogging down. Uh, so basically, what it does, it controls it controls the uh, the resistance, basically how much current is drawing from the motor, and it, and basically the system right here allows the motor to uh, keep a consistent speed and a consistent torque. And one of the things that we're introducing right now via firmware update with a new app that we're going to be launching very soon, this machine is going to have give, even though it's a direct drive system. Wow. Via a firmware update, you're going to be able to have a give on this machine and in any machine that um, that you have out there, if you have a hover, because we're going to have the same technology. So if you have the power supply, you're also going to be able to add give to non-give machines. I like what's gone into it. I mean, the 9-watt foul Bayer motor, I mean, they're pretty bulletproof motors. That company are pretty well known. Another crazy thing that you're going to be able to do once you have the app, uh, let's say you have your phone on the table 
you know, far away from your station, you can actually inv invoke a, a Siri and turn the machine on and off or set it in a particular voltage. So without having to touch anything. So you just working on your piece and you want now to go to a ball. <laughs> That's done. Look at Chris's face right now. He just bought the machine in his head. He's like, I can't resist it. I can't resist it. The moment you said turn the machine on and off with Siri, look at his face. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. For real, man. I mean, you know. <laughs> The technology is there, let's use it. Let's do it, it's a brave new world, right? We've got to move forward and tattooing needs to move forward, you know? 100%, I'm all, off, I'm all for tattooing moving forward. So then, right, with all these extra features you got then, how does that affect like the battery life on the motor? Or on the, you know, the the battery life on the, the power unit that you put in? So if you've got it like running Bluetooth? Great question, because a lot of people are asking uh, about the battery life and the battery life is very, uh, it varies a lot, you know, depending on a lot of uh, parameters. So the electronics and all that stuff, yeah, draw, you know, draw some some battery, but nothing substantial. The yeah, worst yeah. enemy for this machine is going to be using cartridges with a lot of friction, cartridges with a hard membrane, because the motor is going to have to work harder. The motor works harder, it's going to demand more current, and therefore it's going to drain the battery uh, faster. So uh, the main thing with any wireless machine out there, not only me, my machine, or any, you know, with any other wireless machine out there, work with cartridges that have a softer membrane. And this is the reason why, you know, the Virtus cartridge, when I designed them, I had that in mind. You know, I remember machines mm -hmm. heating up with cartridges and I knew that I wanted to design a wireless machine. So um, we designed it with a very soft membrane. Now using, you know, needles like ours, cause you don't have to use ours, but some needle with a soft membrane and using a needle that, I don't want to mention a manufacturer, but one of those uh, cartridge <laughs> needle with a tougher membrane you can double the battery life. Just going down to your to your topic, uh, Stefano Alcantara the other day called me and said, like, man, you told me that this, this machine lasts for about five to 10 hours. Mm. And I'm like, okay, he's gonna tell me that it lasted three. He said, like, man, I was touching for 12 hours, you know, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. machine. I'm like, damn, man, pushing it to 12 hours. I mean, this is the first time I hear this. But once again, he uses the machine at about seven volts, seven and a half volts. Mm. Um, he tattoos very, very smooth. You know, you, his black and gray is very, very soft. Yeah. Also, resistance causes the motor to work harder. So it, there are going to be a lot of things. If you're one of those um, artists that like to run the machine super fast and you bury the four millimeter stroke into the skin, well, you are going to put a lot of resistant, resistance in the motor and you're going to drain the battery faster. So your battery may last to you four hours, five hours, six hours, 10 hours, or even 12 hours, depending how you tattoo and the type of uh, cartridges that you use. Also the type of pigments, there are pigments that are very, very thick, you know, and the pigments start drying in the tip as your tattoo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Average, at least five to six hours of battery life uh, with this machine on an average, you know. So the plan would be buy two batteries, you have one on charge and one in the machine, right? Yeah, one oh, of the reasons okay. why we did it like this, and the Bluetooth is also here, and the battery is also inside. One of the reasons why we did it okay. like this is because this is a lithium ion cell and you know, these batteries are no joke and you know, removing a battery by, by hand and putting the battery and you know, and capping yeah. something, it could be pretty dangerous. So, so sorry, I was going to say that brings me around to one of my other questions because one of the things I wondered was there are obviously like, you know, with these things, vaporizers, there are existing vaporizer, you know, batteries that could be used to run a machine like this. but. A bit like a bad connection in a vaporizer, and we've all seen those nightmare videos on YouTube of basically these things turning into pipe bombs. So I'm going to presume that you made the decision to make that whole thing a little bit safer so that your machine doesn't turn into a pipe bomb in someone's hand. That was the main reason, and because the battery is attached to the uh, electronics, we can monitor that battery at all times, whether the battery is plugged in, whether okay. the battery is out, or whether the battery is in the charger. Well, actually, the charger is built in, you know, whether you have the yeah. USB uh, thing connected. Mm. And uh, yeah, there is a system here monitoring the battery. And if there is, for example, a short circuit, like for example, the contact is yeah. right here in this area. Let's say you put in a piece of metal, uh, electronically, this connects the battery automatically. You know, I, I thought about all that stuff. I used to vape as well, and I remember the stories so, of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lithium ion batteries, we need to come up with a system that's also safe and yeah. easy yeah. to yeah. remove. And with that, uh, tell your friends, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your dirty Uncle Frank. We'll be out here every week slinging tattoo nonsense at you. Who and the fuck I've is been... Uncle Frank? Dirty Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Paul. 
I've been impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm steadily, steadily cutting him down. <laughs> and I know, this has I know. been that tattoo show. Yeah. Okay, I know. we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm. Ha, ha, ha.